Morning all. All right, so we got some signings to talk about. And then I want to talk a little bit about the cap. And as this slows down, we need to look at who's got cap issues. And I understand LTIR is going to help some of these teams. But if you've been complaining about LTIR bailing a team out of being over the cap, and now you're going to say, hey, but my team's got LTIR to get under the cap. I don't I don't know what to say. Anyways, um, so Corey Perry has signed a deal with the Tampa Bay Lightning, the team that's beaten him in two straight Stanley Cup finals. So this is the third time the charm. Uh, he signs a two-year deal for $1 million per season. So he gets two years from Tampa, uh, which, you know, has got to be attractive at this point. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how things go for him. He is a playoff performer. Corey Perry is absolutely a playoff performer at this point in his career, which is weird because, what was it, three years ago? I know the last time that Anaheim was in the playoffs, uh, Perry's play was part of the reason that they were out. Uh, he was taking bad penalties, losing his temper. That's all gone now. So, yeah, Corey Perry, two years at $1 million per season. I'll also be taking a look at Tampa. I'll be looking at various teams, who they've lost, who they've gained once everything settles down. Speaking of gains, I got a word Dallas. Uh, they signed Hawkenpaw, three years at $1.5 million per season. I like Hawkenpaw. <clears throat> so here they are bringing in players that I like, right? Michael Roffel also signs a one-year deal for $1.1 million. That's to make up for losing Cogliano depth-wise, right? So yeah, Dallas uh, making some, some decent moves. And yes, I also will be doing a video on goaltenders because they have they all seem to have changed teams in the offseason. It's just, okay, everybody get a new goalie. Gotcha. And, and it feels like almost every team has. There are some that haven't. But most have at least got one new goaltender. Uh, Brandon Saad. While I was scouting around the internet today, he, he signed a five-year deal with St. Louis for $4.5 million per season. So same cap hit as as Hoffman. Uh, Mike Hoffman in uh, the uh, Montreal uh, signing. But two extra years. So Saad gets a pretty good contract there. New Jersey made the offer, but I guess he decided to go with St. Louis, which makes some sense, and that does help to make up for the loss of Hoffman for the St. Louis Blues. And then Darren Helm signs a one-year deal with Colorado for $1 million as Colorado addresses their concerns with depth as well. Um, I like Helm on a cheap contract. I know the offense is gone for Darren Helm. That's not why Colorado picked him up. And who knows, maybe he can uh, rekindle at least some of that, right, for them. Uh, so, which teams are over the cap according to Cap Friendly? Uh, Tampa, Dallas, Vegas, and Chicago are all currently above the cap. And again, there's LTIR that's going to come off. There's other moves that are going to get made. Uh, teams that are less than $2 million away from being at the cap. Toronto, Montreal, Boston, Edmonton, and the LA Kings. Surprisingly, the LA Kings being that close. Uh, and for Vancouver fans, they're like, "Hey, we're nowhere near the near the cap. Uh, don't hold your don't hold your breath on that. Fourteen million dollars left in cap space to sign Pedersen, Hughes, and Dickinson. So if Dickinson, let's just say Dickinson gets two million a year, that'd leave twelve for Pedersen and Hughes. And I've seen Canuck fans saying, "Oh, he could probably get you know them signed for about four million each." And okay, I. If Sod's worth four and a half million a year, and you tell me Pedersen's worth four, I, I don't know what else to say. Uh, the the one thing with their cap space too is that Michael Furlan did release uh, a letter yesterday, basically saying that he's re he's retired. Uh, he'll stay on the LTIR, but he's not coming back. Basically saying that his his wife and he have talked, and he's agreed that uh, it's in his best interest for his long term health not to come back and play hockey. That uh, with the concussions and what he's gone through that he's probably done. And my first thought was, man, it would be great to have Michael Furlan at one of our meetups, wouldn't it? So that was one of the first thoughts I had. But uh, yeah, so he will be probably playing some ball hockey here and there because uh, he's, he's you know, athletes want to go out and play sports. He just can't do the, the full contact hockey anymore, which, uh, you know, I wish him all the best. And he does still have a few, few seasons left on that contract at $3.5 million per, uh, but that'll be thrown on the LTIR. So there you go. Uh, just a quick news video to start off the day. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below regarding these signings. There will be others made today. And as I said, I will get into which goalies have gone where, which ones are still available. Probably later on today. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. For all your support, I will talk to you again soon.